Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the daily community huddle. Say your salams where you're from. We will get started. Either we hit a hundred people or we get started after at the top of the hour after five minutes. started either we hit hey Afra a long time like Masanam Hira Houston Bilqis wa alaikum assalam Shumaila in Dallas wa alaikum assalam Maheen wa alaikum assalam Patricia, wa alaikum assalam. Masood in Brooklyn, wa alaikum assalam. Alhamdulillah, still alive, Sheikh. Hey, you know what, Masood? I played a game called um, Tom Clancy's The Division, and it takes place in New York. And I learned a lot of the streets of New York from that game. I don't play a lot of games, but that was a game for some reason really connected with me. Fozia, welcome. Fozia, long time. Wa alaikum as -salam. Zoya in Calgary. Wa alaikum as -salam. Rahila in Dubai. Wa alaikum as -salam. Ayman. Wa alaikum as -salam. Seema. Wa alaikum as -salam. Wasif. Wa alaikum as -salam. Christine Dupont. <laughs> I can't pronounce the last name. Dupoy. Wa alaikum as -salam. Uh, Mele in France. Paris. Wa alaikum as -salam. Altaf. Sheikh, on a memorable day, oil prices are crashing. Uh, okay, I need to look that up. A lot of mustan. I need to look up the oil crash. I'm gonna go check it out after this. I'll talk. <clears throat> okay, other salams. I got two windows open. That's why I'm going back and forth between two windows. So who we got? Uh, Milgo in Toronto. Alaikum assalam. Soraya in the UK. Alaikum assalam. Subuhi, tuning in from Orlando. Nusrat from North Carolina, wa alaikum assalam, Amatul Azad in Vancouver. Vancouver is very beautiful, wa alaikum assalam. Hey, we're almost going to hit 100, and we hit 100 people. There you go, my friends. We have passed it. All right. Thank you. Take one. Let's get started. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala, amma ba'd. Good morning, Vietnam. Welcome to today's episode. Hey, Louis Anna, welcome. Okay, so <clears throat> in the seerah, um, in the seerah of the Prophet وسلم, when he was, when he received revelation, he started telling the people of Mecca about Islam, about Allah and Day of Judgment, and they rejected him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They used to spread rumors about the Prophet وسلم, and say that he was Majnoon. He would, they would say that he was Majnoon, that he was crazy. And he was a soothsayer, and if, you know, if he spoke, he, would, um, he was a magician. They used these kind of things. So there was a man who came to Mecca from outside. And um, Quraysh really scared him about the Prophet وسلم. They really frightened him. And they said to him that... If Muhammad speaks, وسلم, if he speaks and it accidentally goes into your ears, you will fall under a trance. And so, and, and so this man said that, um, I actually wanted to get you guys the exact, um, the exact quote. Maybe somebody who knows the hadith, it's in Sahih Bukhari. If you can post it in the comments, that would be great as you're listening, if you know where it is. So this man said that he was so afraid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi um, his words reaching his ears, that he wanted to walk around like with his fingers in his ears or put cotton in his ears so that when he would walk around in tawaf, he wouldn't hear the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this man was walking in tawaf and then he saw the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And imagine seeing the Messenger of Allah as... Um, um, when, when, the, when the Prophet ﷺ, um, went to Medina and the Jews of Medina saw the Prophet ﷺ, uh, one of them said, I, when I saw his face, I knew this was not the face of a person who lies. 
So this man back in Mecca, you know, in the early days, he was um, he was doing tawaf. He saw the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you know, he initially he was afraid, but then when he went around the tawaf again and went around the Kaaba, then he started feeling sad for the Messenger of Allah. So he said that um, I, I'm, he was a doctor. He was a doctor coming to Mecca in those days, and then he. Um, on the third time around, he said to himself, you know what, if Muhammad is sick, if he's mentally um, sick, and I'm a doctor, I can help him, I can heal him. <laughs> this is like the ultimate ignorance, right? When somebody says that, oh, um, he's saying, I can help the Messenger of Allah. Anyways, um, radiallahu anhu, because he became Muslim, so let me... Um, I, do toba for that kind of language. So he went to the Prophet وسلم, and he said to him, I'm a doctor. I've come from out of town and I heard that you're sick and I would like to give you some healing, give, give you some shifa, give you some um, health. And, the, um, and then the Prophet وسلم, responded to him by saying, Inna alhamdulillah. نَحْمَدُهُ وَنَسْتَعِينُهُ مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَا وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَا وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ رَسُولُهُ The khutbah, that when people start, he, um, that's how the Prophet ﷺ responded to him. So let me just go through it with you. Inna alhamdulillah, that all praise is due to Allah. Nahmaduhu, we praise Him. We wanastainuhu, uh, and we seek His help. Wanaudu billahi min shururi anfusina, and we ask Allah to protect us from the evil of ourselves. Wamin sayyati amalina, and from the sins of our actions. Min yahdihillahu, whoever Allah guides, fala mudillala. Nobody can misguide that person. Wamin yudlil, and whoever Allah allows to go astray. Nobody can guide. So back to this doctor guy. Um, his mouth, his jaw just drops open. And he's quiet for a moment. And then he says, Can you say that again? <laughs> he said to the Prophet, Can you say that again? I know you guys hear it all the time and you see it's as if you know like everybody says this but this man has never heard anyone speak like this before and this is the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam started and throughout you know 1400 years we've been imitating and emulating the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the way, in the way that we start our speeches so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to him again inna alhamdulillah all praise is due to allah nahmaduhu we praise him wa nasta'inuhu and we seek his help uh and we ask his forgiveness. Whoever Allah guides, none can misguide that person. And whoever Allah allows to go astray, nobody can guide that person. Until the Prophet ﷺ came to the end, and then the man said to the Prophet ﷺ, Give me your hand because I'm going to become Muslim and I'm going to pledge allegiance to you. And that was his shahada. That's how he became Muslim. Today, I wanted to share with you the power of those words. And I had this question. The question that I had that was in my mind was, what is the difference between Alhamdulillah and having thanks? Like saying, um, Ashkur, uh, you know, Shukran Lillah, or, uh, you know, when you tell a person, thank you. And, and somebody might translate uh, Alhamdulillah as saying, thank you, God. Yeah. So what is the difference between Alhamdulillah and uh, the uh, generic thank you or thank you, O Allah. Are you guys excited to know what the difference is? Yeah, we're really excited. <laughs> okay. So, alhamd is, um, let's talk, we're talking about the difference between these things. Alhamdulillah is actually a praise. It's a glorification. It's a praise. It's a thana, as they say in Arabic. It's a glorification. It's a praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you say Alhamdulillah, it is um, a glorification and praise. But when it comes to um, shukr, when it comes to um, saying um, thank you, thank you is in response to um, um, a blessing that you received. So somebody, for example, opens the door for you and you say thank you. But if you randomly find somebody in the street and you just point at them and you're like, thank you, then they'll say something like, well, what did I do? 
Because thanks is in response to an action, you're receiving a, a, a ni'mah, and then, um, and the, and, but alhamdulillah is a praise that is general to everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created um, to the whole universe, past and present. It doesn't matter about my specific situation or, or whatever, you know, whether I got something or didn't got, 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 get anything, all praise is due to Allah, alhamdulillah. So it's thana. So there's, um, so that's one way of understanding that alhamdulillah is more general than saying shukr. Shukr is very specific. It's specific, somebody gives you something, you say thank you or um, mashkur or, or, or you know, uh, ashkuruk, I thank you, or mashkur when somebody does something for you. Now, on the opposite side, it, um, shukr and hamd also have some, um, alhamdulillah can be specific as well. Alhamdulillah is, some, is, a, um, is an action that you do with your tongue. So you say alhamdulillah. But when you do shukr, you do shukr with action. You do shukr with your hands. You do shukr with your tongue. Um, so you'll say, you know, alhamdulillah, you know, shukr, shukr, alhamdulillah, right? Um, you do it with your tongue, you do it with your body. So you might say, um, I was blessed, you know, God gave me good life and good health, so I'm going to um, go and take care of the needy people. I'm gonna go hand out groceries to people and stuff like that. So you're doing shukr with your body, you're doing it with your heart, you have thankfulness in your heart, and you do shukr with your assets. So you might be, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me all this wealth, and my shukr is paying this shukr to, um, you know, paying my zakat, giving charity, that's also part of doing shukr. So general specific, specific general between the two things. Let's talk about the action. When you see shukr come in the Quran, it's related to action. So a very clear verse that speaks about this, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do, O oh family of Dawood, shukra. Do shukr. Do shukr. So shukr isn't just um, a state. It's just not something that you think about or it's just in your heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, go out there and do shukr. Go and do thankfulness. So what does that mean? It means that thankfulness, when you're doing shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're actually taking some action. And in the, in the verse that's often recited, um, uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and when your Lord declared that if you're thankful I will increase you now this thankfulness this shukr that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there's an opposite to it because Allah continues the verse and if you disbelieve, if you do kufr, which is actually being miserly, which is the opposite. So shukr here is to be generous, is to actually give from what Allah is to take action and thankfulness to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you. And kufr here is to be stingy, miserly, to hold back, not be thankful for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given and in adabi. Lashadid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, you'll see verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands, Anishkur li wali walidayk, and thank me and your parents. Anishkur li wali walidayk. And so a person, when they're doing thanks to their parents, it's some action that a person takes. So you might be giving your mom and dad a massage, you're phoning them and making sure that they're okay, you're taking care of them in their old age. That is the thankfulness. It's not just saying thanks. And there's no action. There's action. It's so action. Anishkur li wali la wali The other, uh, another hadith. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and, and you probably heard this hadith before. Um, la yashkur Allah, man la yashkur an nas. The, uh, uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that he who does not thank the people has not thanked Allah. He who does not thank the people has not thanked Allah. So we see here that thanking the people is an action. You have to physically go and thank people in order to thank Allah. And that's why we're saying that shukr is action. Shukr is not just like you, a praise, a glorification. That's what we see in Alhamdulillah. But shukr, to be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to um, take action. And hamd also is done with the tongue. 
and here I'll give you a bonus point on this on this issue is that if somebody was blessed with a lot of wealth okay imagine this the person was um, uh, blessed with a lot of wealth and they're counting all their coins and they start saying you know they're counting their coins and they're going thank you God thank you God thank you God thank you Allah oh thank you but they don't pay zakat this person doesn't pay zakat and they just keep counting their money and they keep saying, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Allah. Oh, thank you for all this money that you give me. But they haven't paid zakat. Then this person was not thankful, was not thankful because they didn't do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. They didn't do the action that Allah required of them. And the required action was that they pay the zakat and they take care of people and so on. Yes. So that's why we're understanding that shukr is action. When you're thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want that increase from Allah, la in shakartum, Allah, no conditions. If you're thankful and that's thankfulness with action, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase you. The interesting thing, um, um, kind of like a final point here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that if you're thankful, He will increase you. But Allah does not promise that if you're stingy that you will um that you will receive decrease activated decrease so you if um if you're thankful and you take action allah will increase you in blessing if you're not thankful allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the punishment is actually more than just a decrease allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in adabi la shadid that verily my punishment is severe and so the punishment is not decrease, but the punishment is punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the person that is stingy. And so stinginess and miserliness and not being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the opposite of that, like meaning the, the stinginess um, is the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and indeed it is intense. And that's it for our reminder today. Jazakallah khairan for taking this little mini journey with me to understand the difference between Alhamdulillah and shukran lillah. Shukran lillah, we said in conclusion, is, a, is an action, a thankfulness, and alhamd is a praise for everything, beginning to the end, for all human beings, for the heavens and earth. Alhamdulillah, alladhi khalaqa samawati wal ard. Alhamdulillah, all praises to Allah who created the heavens and the earth. Waja'ala dhulumati wal nur. And that's also kind of, I know we're done. The Prophet Wasallam, when he would, um, when he would, you know, was always praising Allah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. And even in situations where there was something painful happened, it wasn't. So you don't say like, so for example, let's suppose you get in a car accident. You don't say, thank you, God, for giving me car accident. That's not the correct language. But you say, alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. All praise is due to Allah. Allah is praised in every situation. It doesn't matter what happened to me. In all situations, Allah is praised. Alhamdulillah. All praise belongs to Allah. So that gives you a better understanding. If you were to translate Alhamdulillah as thank you God, and then you just got into a car accident, then somebody would say, what do you mean? How can I get into a car accident and say thank you God and this and that? And then there's this confusion. So. So yeah, let's do some question and answers. Alhamdulillah, somebody said yesterday that they're enjoying the Q&A and nobody else does q and I don't mind doing Q&A. So let's do it. Who's got a question? Let's see, Paras. What did you say earlier, Paras? I'm scrolling up, finding where it is. Here we go. Paras says, Alhamdulillah, Gohar in Pakistan, you won't believe I was just discussing this with a friend today and wanted to know the difference and how am I supposed to do shukr from the heart. Fozia, Fozia, can you copy your, copy paste your question just because sometimes it's hard for me to spend time trying to find where it is. Copy paste it. And it doesn't let me scroll after a while. Do, 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 do. Jazakumallahu khairan. Okay, I got it, Fauzia. I got it. Um, so what's the exact term we say when we want to personally thank Allah? So do we say, Alhamdulillah, shukr, shukr Allah for blessing me with such and such? Um, 
I think that Alhamdulillah encompasses um, the thanks that you want to give to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you, you, I, I've heard this, people say shukr alhamdulillah, thanks, uh, alhamdulillah, all praises due to Allah. Um, <laughs> sorry, the ringtone. It's not a ringtone, Amina. It's not a ringtone. It's my watch. It's my watch alarm. Uh, my beautiful watch, my huge watch over here. Anyways, so if you say Alhamdulillah, it is, um, it is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You say Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me with such and such. You can be specific with it. But what I'm ta talking about here is shukr. If you really want to do shukr, then you're going to take action. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, blessed you with a new job and you want to do shukr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It could be that you pray two rakahs. It could be that, you know, you um, take part of your salary and go to some fa distant relatives and give them some um, give them some wealth from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed you with. It could be that you go to adopt an animal that needs help and bring that cat into your home, stuff like that. So shukr is action Boom. who's got a question all right Brivin's question so Brivin had a question yesterday that I didn't get a chance to um, to respond to so I'll, I'll respond to it now Beriven, <laughs> and her name is pronounced Biddy Van, but she likes when I call her Beriven. So Beriven said that um, uh, I was talking yesterday about not having, uh, not claiming that you know Allah's intentions. So her question was about, but what about having good intentions about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Um, having good intentions about Allah. So there's the like hadith that if you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to forgive you and have mercy, that's what a believer should do, forgive and have with having good intentions. But I was talking yesterday about, um, you know, don't claim you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's intentions. So what is the difference between the two things? So, um, Bereven, what I was talking about was when people claim like things happening in the world, um, Allah did it because of, you know, X, Y, Z. That's somebody claiming they know Allah's intentions. And um, and they don't know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's intentions. Or I gave the example of what if um, uh, somebody missed a bus on the way to a Quran class and, and then they come home and they're like, Allah doesn't want me to attend that Quran class. And I was trying to make the point that people don't know like, oh, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's plan is, what his intentions are, and that they're trying to make choices in life to take action or not take action based on assumptions of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's intentions are. But what you're talking about is, you know, you return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and you have husn al You have good thoughts. You always have good thoughts about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah wishes good for you, that Allah wishes this and that. Now, if something difficult happens in your life, then you might um, you might say you can you still making your dawn Allah which is good for you and you might respond to that difficult thing that happened well Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to jump higher well this is a test that I can come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with but it's not um, the same as oh I know why Allah did you know or, or this difficult thing in my life and so on Allah Adam. next question Habib is questioned, um, can sujood al shukr be the th um, doing that you mentioned? So, i'malu ala Dawood al shukr like, can you do sujood al shukr as an action, a shukr of action? Um, yeah, I can. So, shukr can, action could be, um, you have like with your tongue, with your wealth, with your, it's it's just an action Um like shukr is, is like, it's a response. So, maybe the response is ibadah. Ibadah, ibadah like sajdat shukr or ibadah like, you know, I'm so thankful to Allah, I'm going to pray Qiyam layl tonight because I'm so thankful or I'm so thankful to Allah, I'm going to give charity or I'm so thankful to Allah, I want to, um, you know, pray on time today and make sure, you know, I pay more attention in my farud salah and so on. So that thankfulness, the action is, 
you know, doing what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded. I mean, this question, when is Visionaire starting? Visionaire starts in Ramadan. I aim to, you know, um, get the message out in Ramadan. Then we start Visionaire. I believe it's going to start May 4th, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's going to start May 4th. It's M Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday for two weeks. And that leads us to the last, um, the last 10 nights of Ramadan so that you have completed the visionary course you have your six dream draws and it's ready to go and then you can make your six dream draws in the uh at the end of the uh sorry you make your six dream draws every day in the last 10 nights of ramadan so sima bablo says was i right in understanding that being stingy is punishable even if you fill your fud but not doing any extra so if you fulfill the fud and do nothing extra then it's not punishable it's not punishable so stinginess if we're talking if we're going to be very specific is not doing the fud so that would be somebody not paying their zakah or somebody I'm not doing their fard prayers and the fard, the pillars of Islam. As as the man came to the Prophet Sallallahu and he said after hearing, you know, the pillars, and he said, I won't do anything extra. And the Prophet Sallallahu said in response, Aflaha in Sadaq, that if he tells the truth and he really does all the fard and does nothing else, that he will be successful. Only problem is that when a person only does the fard things, there's an attitude that comes with only doing the bare minimum, and that is you tend to fall below the minimum. If you aim to like go into a course and say, I'm only aiming for, you know, passing mark is 60%, you only aim for like 60%. I'm like, I'm not aiming for not even one more mark higher than 60%, then chances are you're going to fail. So the Prophet ﷺ said, Aflaha, he will be successful in Sadaq if he's true to what he's saying and he really only does all the fard and he actually gets it done, then he'll be successful. So no, it's not punishable if a person doesn't do voluntary acts. The whole point of voluntary means voluntary. Uh, so Amina's question, Allah Alam. Amina's question, the sujood that we make while reading Quran are those sajda shukr? No, they're called sajda tilawa, sajda, sajda of recitation. Sajda shukr is different. Sajda shukr is like, hey, you got news that your citizenship application was accepted and you're so happy and you fall down in prostration and um, like that. So sajda shukr is not sajda tilawa. Sajda tilawa, tilawa like recitation is recitation sajda. Allah Alam. Sumayya Zakaria says, do you need wudu to do sajda shukr? Wallahu alam. You know, maybe we need to double check it, but I don't think you do. But we need to double check that. Anybody else have a question? That's it. I've reached the end of the questions. If you post a question before, you'd like to ask it again. If I didn't see it, bring it back. So Arian says, Arian, are you um are you in Afghanistan or is that just your last name? It would be cool if it was both. There are people telling me <laughs> I'm just laughing because yesterday, I think or two days ago, I was talking about um people saying stuff, Ramadan's coming around and they should need to keep quiet. <laughs> like don't claim things to Allah without knowing, but it seems like those are your friends. So there are people telling me to instead feed 30 people um, this Ramadan. Alaikum assalam, Louisiana, you're welcome. Because of the virus, should I? Um, so Ariane, I don't, uh, uh, I assume people are at telling you to do that because they're saying there's a lot of hungry people maybe, 
and you know it'd be really virtuous if you gave food um so the so i was gonna say the dumb thing um uh, no i won't say that um <clears throat> the the encouragement to feed people in ramadan applies even without the virus um shahr ramadan the month of ramadan is the month of feeding so the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever feeds a fasting person will um, share in their re reward without taking anything away. So Ramadan is already the month of fasting. Not 30 people, but as many people as you can, even more than that. I don't know why people told you that, Ariane, and telling you instead of fasting you should feed people, that's haram. <laughs> like if Allah commanded you to fast, and they're trying to encourage you. Oh, okay, cool. So Ariane says, they are saying that we are more vulnerable to the virus when we are fasting. Where are you from, Ariane? You didn't mention them. Okay, it says here. You're in Canada, in Toronto, and that you're going to be susceptible to viruses when you're fasting. Um, if somebody's ill and there's a legitimate fear for them that, hey, fasting will weaken their immune system, so actually fasting strengthens a person. Um, and, and, and that's why even non-Muslims and all these biohackers and everybody, they're all fasting. Go to all these non-Muslim biohackers, a whole conference of biohackers, and they're all fasting. Intermittent fasting and this kind of fasting and that kind of fasting. Everybody knows that fasting makes you stronger. Now, somebody is telling you that a, uh, fasting might make you weaker in the beginning Fasting might make you weaker in the beginning so that you become stronger. It's like going to the gym. When you first go to a gym, you will feel weaker, but then you become stronger as time goes by. Fasting is like that. So um, if there is a legitimate reason, Arian, um, and uh, such as somebody's old and they are in a situation where, you know what, it could be dangerous for them, like a legitimate fear, then yeah, there might be a facilita facilitation there. But generally speaking, no, that is not the case. You have to fast and um, yeah, hold on. All right, three more minutes and then we'll do, and then we'll be done. I see your question, Shumayla. So let me, let me, let me take Shumayla's question first, because it's higher up. How do you review, you review your memorization in Ramadan? You know what, Shumayla, I actually wanted to do one of these sessions on, one of these daily huddles on memorization techniques. Do you guys, would you guys like to hear one of these Ramadan huddles on straight up memorization techniques? Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> uh, so I was going to do I think I was going to do it today. But no. Um, so how do I review? I actually lead Tarawih. So that's how I review it. I lead Tarawih. I hold a Mus'haf in my hand. I pray by myself. Or inshallah ta'ala this year, it'll be with family. And um, I'm holding a Mus'haf. I'm, I'm reciting. And out of memory, and then when I start to find myself a little confused um, of, you know, did I recite it correctly or what's the next verse? I'll just take a quick glance at that and then go back to reciting from memory. And so that's what I do. But understand that my memorization review, I've been leading Tarawiyah for like 13 years. Um, and I memorized Quran when I was a little kid. So it's a little different than when somebody's older that you might not be able to get away with less like that. And... I recite, um, yeah, every day. But just reciting, looking at the Mus'haf. I love this question. My son Ibrahim, six year old, is asking, he's making dua for his dream wolf robot. I would like to look up dream wolf robot right now to understand what it is. Ibrahim, that you are making du'a for Dream Wolf Robot. Let me type it in. Is it called Dream Wolf Robot or is it's Wolf Robot, but you're just calling it your dream? Robot. Dream Wolf Robots. Zoids Command Wolf Urban Camo Color Scheme Pinterest. Uh, wolf Robot. Dog Meeting a Wolf. 
I think it's just Wolf Robot without Dream, right? Let me see Wolf Robot. Oh, <laughs> it looks good. Wolf Robot 3D model. Actually, it looks kind of scary too. Okay, let me see where this thing is. Okay, so the question is, um, six-year-old son, son Ibrahim is asking, making the offers, Dream will, will, Wolf Robot, when will he get it? So I will tell you the correct answer, Ibrahim. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes we get what we make du'a for, sometimes we get it later, and sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us something better than what we asked for. So um, sometimes you may make du'a for a wolf robot, and then your mom gets you wolf robot, and Allah answered your du'as, and it's there. Or it may be that, hey, the wolf robot is already in your house and maybe you're going to get it on Eid so that you'll be more thankful and make dua throughout the month. Or it may be that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has something better for you that your dua for wolf robot after a while, you don't realize that cat ninja is better than wolf robot or something like that. And then later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you cat ninja and you're like, wow, this is better than wolf robot. Allah. And that's it, my friends. Zagalah Khan for whoever else asked questions. I just want to finish off at the end, um, finish off half an hour. Uh, we are here every day, so if you have a question, inshallah ta'ala, just tune in earlier. Um, um, tune in tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, and uh, ask your questions earlier on. Copy paste it so that you'll have it available next time. Okay, guys, that's it. I am finished. Zakalakhiran, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bye. Bye.